All right, welcome to the second video on music theory for guitarists. What we're going to learn here is the important first scale that we should learn in the C major scale. Okay, a lot of us learn uh, the pentatonic first, um, but as we're taking a look at music theory, the C major scale is going to be the scale from which the other scales are derived. Okay, um, it's just super um, clear on a piano, um, and so let me show you that right now. All right, the pattern for the major scale is really easy to see in C major on the piano because it's all the white keys. And you'll notice that we have two black keys and then three black keys. And that is the arrangement of the major scale. Any distance between two keys is considered a half step. So to go from C to C sharp, that's a half step. And then C sharp to D, that's a half step. So from C to D is a whole step. C sharp half, C sharp to D, the other half whole. All right, so D to E would be also a whole step because I have the D sharp. E to F, there's no black key between E and F, so it's only a half step. Then I have three whole steps from F, G, A to B, and then no black key again, so only a half step to B, from B to C. And you can see that's where you see the formula right there of the major scale. Okay, so that's how the C major scale works on a piano. Guitar, not quite so easy, but if you watched video number one, you've actually played the C major scale because by playing the, only the natural notes, you're actually playing the C major scale. We have a C on the fifth string. So if we extend past the 12th fret a little bit, we can play one. So we have our C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? So there's a C major scale horizontally along the fifth fret. Another very, very useful form is to actually play vertically across the strings. So from string six down to string one, and you can actually get two octaves rather than just one, all right? And there are two, I'm going to show you in this series, four different fingering patterns for the C major scale. But there are two that are um, kind of called golden grips sometimes. Because a very important guitar rule is we want this idea of one finger per fret. Okay, so I play this first finger would play all the notes on this fret, no matter what string I'm on, and likewise second, third, fourth string. And there are two positions that the C major scale fits where you don't actually have to shift your fingers at all. And that first one is starting at the eighth fret with our um, uh, second finger, okay, which is a shift for guitarists because often if you've learned the pentatonic, you probably learned it with your first finger as well as bar shapes, right? But now we're going to use our middle finger, okay, and we have a C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, then I come back D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, notice I didn't have to shift my, my finger stayed in the same fret location the entire time. Okay, and then of course I would want to descend. As I practice that, I'd want to use a metronome and um, ascend the scale, descend the scale, working on alternate picking, okay, as I burn this pattern into my, into my brain. All right, when you've memorized that and you can play it evenly and in time, Come back for video number three, and I'm going to show you several different fingering patterns for C major scale in different locations on the guitar neck.